And hello everyone, welcome back to a new video. Alright, so today I'll be teaching you all about freeing objects from the memory. So removing it so it doesn't take any more memory. As well as uh, using auxiliary methods. So we're going to use the same form as last time. We have our two edits or read or spin edit and our rich edit and then one button and a new button right here so yeah we're probably going to use that new button but let's continue so in button display let's say we are done working with this object we don't want it to actually exist anymore because this object right here is just going to be kind of annoying. So, so actually, let's use that other button that I created right here. Let's quick edit it. And then we can change the name to BTN free and the caption to free object. Now, when they click on this button, it should free the human object. Because right now, in basically every button, so let's add actually another button just to show you. And basically every other button we can use the human object once it has been created. So let me just space these out. Quick edit this. BTN uh, temp because it's going to be temporary. Uh, click me. Okay. So just to show you, we can actually go here and say object human dot and let's say uh, get monster type so there you can just say show message and then if we run this and we click here on display to first create the object because if we don't create it we can't actually use it in somewhere else and it says hey this is a human now so because this is basically usable everywhere it's not that bad you know you can kind of See how this can be useful, and this is usable everywhere because we did declare it up here. But we first initiate the object down here. That's why we have to click the button before we can use it. So let's say if the user clicks this button, you want to free the object. So let's say in a gaming perspective, if the NPC is out of the player's sight, then they should not be active anymore to save RAM. They should be destroyed, basically. So, or if, or if the user enters a house, then everything outside of the house gets destroyed from memory. Something like that. So then you can just say something like object human dot free. And this will just free the object from memory. It will remove it so we don't have to worry about it anymore. So we can click display. Click, click me if you want and now if we click free object it just freed the object from memory so we're going to say click me it's going to be like oh i don't understand what you mean let me click this again there it goes so basically what this did it just freed this human object right here it just freed it from memory so you can still click the button and we'll try and get it but since there's nothing in here it's just going to return nothing because we didn't insert anything because it doesn't say human anymore. So that's what it means to free something from the from the memory. So it just clears it. The object still exists, but it doesn't take any more resources. It's you're done with it. Okay, so that's how you clear an object from memory. Now let's open the class. So in the last video I told you all there's something called auxiliary methods. Now auxiliary methods are basically just everything that's not a getter or a setter, or in other words, mutator or accessor. So if it doesn't get anything for you, it calculates something probably, or it displays something specific. For example, let's say if we want to know how much the attack is of this, or how much coins you'll get, if the, let's see, uh, Let's do attack. If we want to, we want to figure out how much damage is done when this monster attacks you. Let's say to figure that out, you have to multiply 
the monster's HP by two. Just as a simple thing. So then you can go function calc attack for calculating the attack. And this returns an integer, which is the damage. So control shift C and we can say result becomes and you can say get HP because we already created it so why not use it get HP times 2 so this is basically the damage it will do so if we say hey calculate the, the, the attack please they're going to be like okay let's calculate it so let's go to uh, let's display right here we can display a show message Uh, let's say object uh, show message object, oh wait we have in Richard so why not use it rich uh, red display the lines that I had and we can say object human into string into to string object human dot calc attack and that will just calculate the attack for us. Where's the error? There's an error. Enter to do string. You just didn't update it yet. So run that. Now, if you say display, it says, hey, the, 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 the attack of the human is 10, so they do 10 damage. As you can see, we have 5 HP, we times that by 2, and we get 10 damage. So yeah, that is basically an auxiliary method. You'll also see a lot of people putting the the two string function. So let's say function to string. Uh, you'll see a lot of people doing this. Now, what is the dot two string function or the, the two string function? Now, basically, it just displays something to your output. That's why it's an auxiliary method. It doesn't get any information. It doesn't set information or get information, but it displays it to the user. So it just basically formats the information you have and then displays it to the user. So let's control shift C that. And here we go to two string and we can say, let's see, okay, variable, variable is out, which is a string string please and you say s out becomes uh, let's say the user is called or uh, the monster type is and you can say plus get monster type plus hash 13 then s out becomes s out plus and then we can say you get plus int to string and here's another thing I can tell you when you want to use something like int to string it doesn't actually exist because int to string is actually part of a library that does things for you as you can see here right underneath interface there's nothing there but here underneath interface there's a users clause now basically this uh, this just brings in some stuff for us so if we go here and we type uses uses and we say we want system dot util is it system dot uses I think it's sysutils no, yeah system dot utils we want this system dot utils is basically the into string function so now if we go back here and we try and autocomplete int to string in it exists and we can say get uh, can we get nope uh, f coins we can what how do we get the coins do we have it something here is friendly yeah okay. so we want f coins then i believe yes no i coins because we changed it okay i coins and uh, f from killing this monster then hash 13 again ds s out becomes s out 
plus and let's add one more thing uh, it has let's say get uh, into two string get HP total HP and then we can go result becomes is out so what did we do here basically the two string function just gives you a formatted output so in this case it tells you hey this monster is a human and this monster also drops this amount of coins if you kill it and it has this much hp so you should think before you attack it that's basically what that is it just displays the output and when you want to do that you can actually go here you can go uh, red display dot clear just to clear everything and red display the lines dot add is an object human dot two string do that and we can run this now if we click display the monster type is human you get 90 as you've said coins from killing this monster it has five total hp and then free it again and try to display it free it click me nothing happens normal stuff and we can also do the same with goblins or vampires. We can say well, let's do 20. And let's instead of object human, we go object goblin dot two string. Because all of them have two string now, because we create an object which has a two string to it. And if we say display. Monster type is goblin, you get 20 from killing this monster and there's a total of 10 HP. Simple stuff. And now of course, if you want to make it dynamic, you can get user input. So then they can create their own objects. So for example here, you, they can create the object called dragon. And you can say how much of this object it should create. So how much does there exist in this world of type dragon? And then if you're going to attack this dragon, what's the chances of you dying? So, also before we continue, I just want to tell you that this is called a destructor. Dot free is a destructor. Destructor. So, this dot create is a constructor. So, this creates the object. This is a destructor. It freeze or destroys the object so this basically in simple terms take my words with a grain of salt here puts the object in memory or creates a space in memory for the object and this removes the object from that space in the memory so it frees the memory so destructor constructor You can also create your own destructor if you want, but I wouldn't recommend it because Delphi gives you pretty good destructor already. Okay, so this is, has been a, basically an object in basically everything. We're going to practice it a little in the next few videos just to get the hang of it because getting into object is just something you need to practice. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed.